We are accustomed to treating history as an immutable whole, complete with a very convenient chronological scale attached. Every event we're interested in can be looked up, which usually satisfies the most frequently encountered kind of amateur historian who wants to know the right date for everything. The tradition of memorizing vast arrays of perfectly useless material hails back to Giordano Bruno and beyond. So there must be something in it that baffles the imagination of mere mortals. Professional historians are well aware that there are lots of gaps and inexplicable twists on the scale, and prefer to remain taciturn about those for the very simple reason that they're professional historians, and paid to make that scale look even. Apparently this cannot be done. The Russian mathematician Anatoly Fomenko was the first to have questioned the validity of global chronology in its entirety. However, there were criticisms of the chronological tradition that became consensual nowadays ever since the days of its creation in the 16th-17th century, and the list of the critics includes such names as G. Hardouin, Edmund Johnson, Sir Isaac Newton, and, last but not least, the Russian encyclopedist Nikolai Morozov. Fomenko was the first to have developed a new empirico statistical methodology which yielded some sensational results concerning many ancient dynasties and their identification with those of the Middle Ages, with impressive geographical shifts to boot. Astronomy is another powerful resource that provides Fomenko and team with more than enough valid and factual evidence for their theory. It turns out that most ancient eclipses are dated incorrectly. Fomenko's new fundamental work tells us that, apparently, all of the eclipses with detailed descriptions belonging to the period between 1000 BC and 580 get independent astronomical datings that differ significantly from the ones offered by consensual chronology and belong to a much later epoch, namely, the interval between 500 and 1700 AD. This shifts ancient events forwards in time by several centuries and, in some cases, millennia. The old concepts of time were substantially different from modern ones. Before the 13th-14th century the devices for time measurement were a rarity and a luxury. Even the scientists didn't always possess them. The Englishman Valkyrius was lamenting the lack of a clock that afflicted the precision of his observations of a lunar eclipse in 1091. The clocks common for medieval Europe were sundials, hourglasses, and water clocks, or clepsidrae. However, sundials only were of use when the weather was good, and the clepsidrae remained a scarcity. In the end of the 9th century AD, candles were widely used for timekeeping. The English King Alfred took them along on his journeys and ordered them to be burned one after the other. The same manner of timekeeping was used in the 13th-14th century, in the reign of Charles V. The monks kept count of time by the amount of holy book pages or psalms they could read in between two observations of the sky. For the majority, the main timekeeping medium was the tolling of the church bells. One is to bear in mind that astronomical observations require a chronometer that possesses a second hand. While we learn that even after the discovery and the propagation of mechanical clocks in Europe, they had been lacking the minute hand till 1550. This book will change your entire perception of history forever. What if ancient Rome, Greece and Egypt were invented during the Renaissance? What if the Old Testament was a rendition of events in the Middle Ages? What if Jesus Christ was born in 1053 and crucified in 1086 AD? Sounds unbelievable? Not after you've read History, Fictional Science by Anatoly Fomenko, the leading mathematician of our time.